Buffy reasons that Xander wouldn't be in any danger because the she-mantis only goes after virgins. She then falters as she realizes that Xander could be a virgin, and then she denies it because Xander doesn't seem like a virgin. After all, he acts like he has a lot of experience. Willow understands Xander better and realizes that he is a virgin and in trouble. Willow goes to Xander's house and hears from his mom that he went to work on a science project at a teacher's house. Buffy learns from Giles that she needs to slice the she-mantis's limbs off to kill her. Buffy gives orders, telling Willow to get Miss French's address from the school database, and Giles to get recordings of bat cries, which he read will stun mantises. Do your homework, kids! I do find it unlikely that authentic bat sounds would be obtainable, as they would likely be altered for human ears to hear them better. Plus, I doubt that any speaker intended for human ears would allow that kind of sound to play. I don't think they have the range of bat sonar. On top of that, the she-mantis would be too big to be affected in the same way as a normal mantis. But this is a plot that actually has me saying the phrase she-mantis. So, yeah. The Scoobies rush to the address, only to find a completely different Miss French, an elderly woman whose identity the She-Mantis stole. The only option is for Buffy to track down Fork Guy and use him like a domesticated animal to see when he senses a predator. After emphasizing how scary Fork Guy is, it shows Buffy's strength in that she's able to grab and control him like this. Fork Guy breaks free, but Buffy stakes him. I feel strong. Meanwhile, the She-Mantis selects Xander to be her next mate. He tries to run, but she grabs him and starts creepy mantis foreplay. Only now does Xander regard the rape as horrific, when she's an ugly mantis. The fact that it's treated as horrific is good, and the gender role reversal with Buffy and Xander is good, but the fact that the seduction part with a sexy woman isn't treated as seriously is a problem. Buffy breaks in the window and attacks the She-Mantis with raid. It smells good. But it really kills them dead. While Giles sneaks behind her to free Xander, the She-Mantis recovers, so Buffy takes out the tape recorder and tells the kids the importance of doing their homework as she hits play. And it turns out to actually be some stupid lecture that Giles recorded and not the bat sounds. Giles points out that it's the wrong side of the tape. This was a common technical problem back when people used cassette tapes. It's kind of a subversion of Buffy's witty defeat of Luke in The Harvest, but not in a way that makes Buffy seem stupid. It's a mundane mistake that anyone could make and that's what makes it funny. The fight continues. Xander tries to play the hero with Raid, but he just gets in the way. Buffy pushes him aside. Giles manages to get the bat sonar playing, and Buffy hacks her to pieces. It's a subversion of the beginning fantasy, where it's emphasized that Xander is not the dashing male hero, Buffy is not the helpless maiden, and she is going to save the day. Nothing here is what it seems. It's not exactly the same. It's not set at the bronze and there are no vampires, only a she-mantis. And I think that's why feminists criticize the beginning of the episode as sexist on its own, but the end of the episode uses similar themes to promote feminist ideas to counter those of Xander's fantasy. Xander admits that he acted like an idiot and he thanks Buffy sincerely. Blaine adds his thanks. Willow empathizes with them and says that it's bad that the she-mantis targeted them because they were virgins. Xander and Blaine are instantly humiliated as Willow praises them as better than other boys for doing the smart thing. They both deny being virgins until Giles explains that the She-Mantis only targets virgins, and then Blaine threatens a lawsuit if anyone finds out. Xander tells Blaine to shut up about the lawsuit. Willow seems into Xander for being a virgin because that's the right, responsible choice. I suspect some WB executive meddling here. Joss did only get the line about a dress making Buffy look like a slut into Welcome to the Hellmouth by arguing that it's portrayed as a bad thing to be a slut. The WB was definitely concerned about conservative Christian backlash for the first season, and the sex negativity seems to be a part of it. By season 3, things loosen up, and Xander ultimately loses his virginity in the most casual sexual encounter ever. That was great. I got a shower. I blame the WB executive pressures for this twisted message, but it's still twisted. Something Anita doesn't touch on, but that I would say is an important part of the evil demon seductress trope, is the Madonna whore dichotomy. Women are encouraged to be chaste, good girls to have value, and the evil demon seductress represents the nasty, bad girls. Buffy is supposed to be a better mate for Xander because she's not seductive like Miss French. Love with a chaste girl is supposed to be better than with a slutty girl. We don't usually see that with boys, so having it applied to Xander and Blaine is a gender role reversal, but not in a particularly feminist way. It's just transplanting something problematic on the girl's side to take root on the boy's side. That's just bad. The implication of Willow saying it's horrible that the She-Mantis targets virgins is that it would be less horrible if they weren't virgins. 
It's saying that the promiscuity is such a sin that it makes them lose some essential worth as human beings. The she mantis would then be punishing sin the way women in American horror movies are often killed off for engaging in sex, as is harshly criticized in Joss Whedon's Cabin in the Woods film, which presents the horror film punishment dynamic as an evil human sacrifice ritual enjoyed by cruel and sadistic gods. It's the same idea that says women should have to suffer through unwanted pregnancy because they made the choice of having sex, viewing the sexual act as a sin, and that such sinners must be punished. Oh yeah! Action! Now that's a cleansing fire! In contrast to normal sports injuries that are patched up without a second thought, despite everyone making the choice to engage in dangerous sports. The she mantis plot transplants something hurtful to women on a societal level to men, and it is deeply problematic as a result. As for Xander and Blaine's humiliation, it does portray them as silly for being embarrassed, and it's also good that virgins are not shamed either. The bragging about sexual conquests and associated sexism is what's really bad, though, so I wish they'd focus on that. There at least is the implication that Xander and Blaine will loosen up about it now, as a result of the Scoobies finding out that they're virgins and having them not shame them for it. Xander hacks up the egg sac to take out his anger at being violated, which seems to me like a reasonable expression of aggression. Angel visits Buffy just to be sexy for the female audience. Technically, he praises her for killing Fork Guy, but it's mostly just to be sexy. Oh boy. At school, there's a stupid strict science teacher boring Buffy out of her mind. She puts Dr. Gregory's glasses away, saying goodbye to her favorite teacher, introduced only to make Buffy's storyline more interesting. We then see that there are actually some surviving she mantis eggs, which start to hatch. Clearly, these will be important later on, or they could never be mentioned again. Teacher's Pad is sometimes called the worst episode ever, though I personally think that this honor goes to Season 1, Episode 8, I, Robot, You, Jane. The episode is very clumsy. There are a few good messages in there about Xander needing to accept Buffy's authority and being okay in a subordinate role and the struggle of high school boys to navigate their sexuality is treated empathetically without getting too sexist. There's also some good balance with girls ogling Angel. The teacher-student rape narrative is better than others for recognizing male vulnerability, but it ultimately isn't good enough to have the boy recognize an attractive woman as a rapist. The she mantis storyline is just sexist to its core. There's just no getting around that. Grr. Arg. 